Welcome to the Van Blam YouTube channel and welcome to another two minute test ride where I get just a little bit of seat time and have just a little bit to say about it. Sounds nice. There's no getting around it. Comfort is heavy. That's one of the fundamental dilemmas of motorcycling. The more sporty and agile your bike is, the more unpleasant it is to cover long distances in a straight line. Conversely, the better your bike is at munching freeway miles, the more encumbered you'll be when you get to the twisty mountain roads. However, every once in a while, someone manages to cram a lot of motorcycle into a package that's more manageable than it has any right to be. The Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX is one of those bikes. Mounting up and setting off, it is immediately clear that, despite saying the word ninja on it, this is not a super sport. The bike itself is heavier and bigger than any sport bike I've ever ridden. Even so, its weight and bulk feel paltry in comparison to the power this thing is packing. Yeah, it doesn't take much effort to get this thing moving. Oh yeah, this is really powerful. <laughs> the route Kawasaki used for this demo event didn't give me much room to explore the motor, but even getting two-thirds of the way up the rev range showed me some seriously impressive power. I'm not going to come anywhere close to exploring this bike's full power, but it's nice to know that at the very least this is incredibly easy to ride. And it's also incredibly comfortable. It didn't take much throttle to trigger a pretty aggressive intervention from the traction control system. That is extremely powerful. My goodness. Other onboard electronics include cornering ABS, cruise control, Bluetooth connectivity, rider modes, and a quick shifter. There's a TFT dash, but it's not super intuitive and unfortunately is very reflective. Also, I cannot think of a less useful feature to be taking up room on the screen than a lean angle indicator. Speaking of leaning, the Ninja 1000 felt fairly sprightly, even without having dialed in the fully adjustable suspension. Like how it feels leaning over. I have no doubt that this is more sport bike than I would ever be capable of using. But what about touring chops? Sure, it's got big highway power, but what else do you get in exchange for that extra weight and bulk over other ninjas? It's funny, the seat has, it has the shape of a sport bike seat, but the amount of padding makes it way, way more comfortable than any other sport bike I've ridden. The Ninja 1000 definitely has one foot in sport bike and the other foot in sport tourer. The riding posture is closer to neutral than it is to sporty. There's good wind protection from the fairings and adjustable screen, optional hard saddlebags, and did I mention cruise control? Suffice to say, the Ninja 1000 SX offers perhaps the best balance of performance and long-range comfort that I've come across. The only true direct competitors I can think of are the Suzuki GSX S1000 GT and maybe the BMW R1250 RS. Stray any further and you'll only find bikes that are more sporty but less cruisy or vice versa. Nothing seems to match the Ninja's sport touring harmony without being heavier, more expensive, or both. From where I'm standing, the Ninja 1000 SX is the best choice for a rider who wants to be king of the mountain, but lives on the prairie. Well, that was quite enjoyable. 